Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about the best machine guns available in Battlefield 4 and hopefully narrow it down to one or two of the best options available. And now that Battlefield 4 is pretty much in its final balanced state, it's worth revisiting the machine gun category to figure out where they all sit. In my previous videos, I said the AWS was one of the best LMGs you could use. It has gone through some considerable changes since then. Not only does it spread decrease at a slower rate now, but it also has higher recoil than it did before. Four. So it's still a very good LMG, but it's not quite where it used to be, which was something that could out damage most assault rifles on the game and had a hundred round magazine. And basically a lot of the spread and recoil changes affected many of the machine guns out there because they were able to compete with assault rifles in close to medium range combat. And now when you fire at medium range targets, you'll be firing directly on target, but your bullets won't be hitting. And that's largely due to the spread nerf that a lot of the LMGs got. The 780 round per minute rate of fire of the AWS makes it a force to be reckoned with in close to medium range combat. Then again, there might be some better alternatives out there. There. If you have the MG4 or the M249, those shoot at 800 rounds per minute. And since their accuracy now is not as big of a difference from the AWS, they might be better alternatives to consider. Once upon a time, the MG4 and M249 LMGs were almost identical. You had to get the M249 from completing the campaign and you could unlock the MG4 within the multiplayer game experience. Now they're a bit different and I think I actually lean a bit more towards the M249. It's got lower first shot recoil, it's got lower uh, vertical recoil, so it maintains an easier weapon to sort of maintain on head level targets or sort of mid to upper chest level targets. It does have higher side to side recoil. You could try and reduce this with a compensator, but again, because of the spread issues, I generally don't like to put any attachments on the weapons that further hurts the spread issue of this gun. So you could either run it naked or you could run with a stubby grip. The M249 without question is one of the best close to medium range machine guns with its 200 round box magazine. You're not gonna have to worry about reloading until you've burned through five, maybe 10 enemies, depending on what you run into. So it's an excellent brawler class weapon, but it's going to start to fail you at those further ranges. It is, however, one of the highest damaging machine guns in the game, only being beaten out by a few others like the M240 Bravo or the PKP. Now, without question, it's worth mentioning the M240 Bravo. This is a big ass machine gun, and it's almost comical the way that you can use it in Battlefield if you would like to. Most people aren't going to be running around with this weapon shoulder firing it. It's a heavy gun, and in real life, you're most likely going to be using it with a bipod or laying it on a ledge somewhere. In fact, if you do plan on using the 240 Bravo in Battlefield because you want the biggest, baddest machine gun available in the game, this has the highest damage per second out of any of the guns there, I would recommend using it with a bipod. This has incredibly high recoil, so it's hard to be accurate at those further ranges. Um, and if you use it with a bipod, you can tame all that recoil instantaneously. Now, obviously, if you're using it with a bipod, chances are you're going to want to be on a very choke pointy map probably a rush or a metro type game mode and just set up and go to town. It can do absolutely massive damage when in the right situation. If you're not going to run it with a bipod, uh, I think it's a little bit too hard to control. You start to lose too much accuracy at those medium range engagements. Um, at close quarters, the slower rate of fire makes it a little bit trickier to use than guns like the 249. This is probably the only situation that I would actually recommend using a bipod. So 240B, if you want to do your bipod gameplay, this is the ultimate weapon to use it with. Now, I've been talking about a lot of guns that really got hurt in the medium range department in terms of accuracy. DICE, I think, did a pretty good job of balancing out the LMGs and giving you a lot of variability and options depending on what kind of gameplay you want. If you really like the idea of playing the support class and using something with a bit more range to it, uh, I love running with the M60 E4. However, this loadout is highly dependent on my setup. I have to have an angled foregrip and I have to have the most minimal red dot sight possible. The iron sights on the M60 E4 are rendered terribly in Battlefield, giving you this huge basically chunk of metal right in front of you, making it very difficult to get any sort of accurate shots off. Uh, the iron sights are actually rendered inaccurately. Um, they should be much finer, much more precise in real life. It's just an issue with the perspective rendering in the game, unfortunately. 
But if you use a red dot sight and while you're shooting the gun, the front iron sights bob around a little bit and it makes it easier to get on target with it. Now let's talk about why you'd want to run an angled foregrip on this gun and how you need to shoot it to be effective. The M60 E4 has a one times first shot multiplier and you might be thinking, well, if it's only one times, how can you reduce that further? Well, if you put an angled foregrip on there, you can actually take that to smaller than a one times multiplier. This means that literally your first shot is going to have less recoil than the follow-up shot after it. So if you do a very small burst, you can have an incredibly accurate burst of fire with high damaging rounds to drop people super fast in close quarters or medium range. Uh, and if you tap fire it at long range, you're gonna get very, very low recoil if you just kind of semi-auto tap it. It's an amazing weapon when you learn how to use it properly. The weapon isn't going to break any sort of damage per second records out there, but it more than makes up for that in accuracy and versatility. Its DPS isn't low, it's only a little bit lower than say an M249 in CQB. Its slower rate of fire makes it a little bit trickier to use in CQB, so it's not the ideal weapon for up close combat, but at medium range and then even further than medium range, this thing excels unlike any other LMG out there. If you find yourself in a heavy traffic corridor, just line your crosshair up at head level, start shooting at corners. Even if people haven't peeked yet, they generally will, and they'll peek right into your fire, and you'll take them down before they even have a chance to take a shot at you. You have unlimited ammo with the support class, so suppressing fire is absolutely something that you can do and will want to do. And then the last machine gun that I'm going to be considering for a top tier LMG here is the RPK 74M. This is something that I know X factor is a huge fan of. It's incredibly accurate and it got updated to do 30 damage maximum. So it's got its own damage category compared to any of the other LMGs out there. The 30 damage max allows you to have a four shot kill in close quarters. If you mix a headshot in there, you can reduce that substantially and then it drops off to 20. It's only got a 40 round magazine and in many ways this rifle plays out very much like an assault rifle. It's got incredibly accurate fire an all right reload of 3.15 seconds, which is okay if you consider it as a 40 round magazine. Very low first shot recoil. You can either run it naked with just a red dot sight on there or play around with an angle grip or a stubby grip. Um, there's a few different combinations for this weapon but again it's very accurate and high damaging. So an ideal medium to long range weapon. Great for rush and conquest style game modes. The biggest drawback on this LMG is it's very small magazine size of 40 rounds. You can't really jump into a huge crowd of enemies and expect to take them all out at least not without the help of some C4. So having this compared to say an M60, the M60's got that 100 round magazine, so you can do a lot more damage before you need to reload. Again, the trade-off is that it has a faster reload than the box mag uh, LMGs out there. So you have to just kind of play with both of them and decide what suits your style a little bit better. Both are very capable medium to long range LMGs. All right, now of these LMGs that I've just mentioned, I'm gonna narrow it down to two, one for close quarters, one for long range. I know there's a lot of other LMGs to pick from out there um, and they're not bad LMGs. There's a lot of perfectly decent LMGs that didn't make this list. They just don't offer anything in the damage per second category or the range category that outperforms the ones that I've already mentioned. Also, because the LMGs are so varied here, there doesn't seem to be anyone specifically that's the master of close range, medium range, and long range. I found a much bigger discrepancy between ones that are good at long range and ones that are good at close range. My close range choice is the M249 for me personally. I know a lot of people like the MG4. It at one point was better in my mind than the M249, but so many changes have been made to weapon attachments and the guns themselves that I think the M249 kind of ekes ahead in my book. Um, it's going to tear people up in CQB. It's got a 200 round magazine, 800 round per minute rate of fire, and is accurate enough to deal with people at close to medium range. Like you can go through an entire squad of people with this gun, and I have. And then we have the long range performer here, and for me, it's got to be the M60 E4. Aesthetically, the gun is awesome. The front iron sights are a freaking nightmare, and I kind of wish Dice would do one last update and just fix them but besides that the accuracy and damage at range this thing is absolutely insane and you will drop so many people at ranges that they're just not expecting you to you can take down two three four guys at uh, really long ranges before needing to reload with this weapon and it just takes so many people by surprise because they don't expect you to be able to put out that kind of damage at that range 
absolutely awesome. It can certainly handle itself in close to medium range combat as well. If you're good at going for those headshots, then the more power to you, this thing is going to chew people up. You definitely need a little bit more finesse and a little bit more skill to use this weapon platform effectively compared to say the M249, um, but that's just something that maybe you can upgrade to if you've been using the M249 a lot in close quarters and you feel more confident with your aiming and your tap firing ability, the M60 E4 might be a good upgrade. Anyway, that wraps it up for an updated look at the best machine guns available in Battlefield 4. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.